Hey what's up guys, so Valheim has been out for a bit now and many of you guys have been playing the game for quite a while and might have finished your first playthrough of the game or essentially have not much left to do in your current world. So this video will go over unique things that you can do in a second playthrough of the game that you might have not done the first time around to essentially spice things up or give you a different type of experience and I believe that Valheim can easily provide over 500 hours of entertainment so here are 10 exciting changes you should try for a second playthrough through of Valheim. Number 1. Altering gameplay choices. So Valheim might not be a RPG, but there are in fact a few things you can do to progress differently in the game. From minor things like picking a character of the opposite sex and accordingly giving your character a completely different look, to things that will actively change the way you play the game. A good example for this is using weapons you didn't use the first time around. A lot of weapons have a different type of attack and a unique secondary attack, which really changes the way the game feels if you decide to use a different weapon. So let's say you use the mace almost exclusively the first time around. Then this time maybe try to use the add gear. Or maybe use the sword. Or the knife. I'm flying! Or the axe. Or even if you're really funky, the harpoon. Gotcha! Help! 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 <laughs> This way, you'll completely change the way you engage in combat in this game while discovering new types of attacks. Another gameplay altering option is for example skipping the leather to bronze armor transition. And instead of going for bronze armor after leather, you go with troll armor. With troll armor, you can roleplay a bit and make yourself this sneaky archer. This is because the troll armor set is in fact the only set in the game that currently has a set bonus effect. And this way it's really easy to consistently apply the sneak bonus effect in the game and with that deal massive amounts of damage. Many players might skip this and just go from leather to bronze armor in one go because the bronze armor has in fact a little bit higher armor ratings. But yeah, try it out, the troll armor set. Change number 2, Hardcore Mode. A way to play the game differently is by keeping yourself on your toes. Valheim doesn't actually have a hardcore mode like other games, but you can make this mode yourself. A popular way to do this is by enforcing the permadeath rule. This means that if you die once, you're gone for good and you delete your character. Playing this way will make sure that you have a 100% focus on the game and also make sure that you play this game way more calculated in comparison to your first playthrough of the game. If that's too hardcore for you, then you can also do something less extreme. For example, playing on a seat that is more challenging. I made a video about that actually, check it out if you're interested. Other ways include excluding yourself from using certain items like the bow or other weapons, or maybe even restricting yourself to use portals. Another way is that you can only use one type of armor set for the entire game. Like for example using the troll armor set that we just talked about. And then you'll have to use this set from the start of the game all the way till the end of the game. There are many ways of making your own hardcore mode and it also depends on what ideas you have in your own mind. But one thing is for sure, all these rules will keep the game entertaining for you and make the game significantly more challenging. Change number 3, Mods. So mods are a popular way to introduce new gameplay mechanics to games and can be really fun for a second playthrough. With mods you can make changes ranging from small quality of life changes to complete overhauls of the actual gameplay. So you can download mods at Nexus Mods for example and there are currently a lot of Valheim mods out. So way too much to cover in this video. I might make a standalone video about this topic in the future if you guys are interested in something like that. But for this video I'll give like two examples of mods that I like. And the first one is Epic Loot and this mod is really great as it does add another dimension to the loot drop experience. So this mod makes it so that enemies can now drop magic items with different rarities such as rare, epic and legendary drops. Basically it adds cool effects to already existing items in the game and the higher the rarity the better the drop. Changing the loot drop experience like this makes it a bit more exciting and also a bit more in line with RPGs and games like Diablo because now you can get really cool items pretty much randomly from any enemy in the game. Another pretty cool mod is the Valheim Legends mod. This mod introduces a class system and with this mod you can become a mage, a ranger, a rogue and a lot more possibilities. 
In the game you'll be greeted by Yugen telling you what to do to activate your power. You'll have to go to an altar of the first boss to activate your class by offering an item to the altar. And afterwards you will become the new class in effect and get three new cool abilities. Depending on your class you can start shooting fireballs, doing flying kicks, Help! teleporting, summoning creatures and much more. So those were just two crazy mods that I like. But like I said before, there are way more mods out there. And they can definitely be a way to make your second playthrough a completely unique experience. <coughs> Change number four, joining the body recovery squad. So after finishing your first playthrough, you'll probably have a ton of experience and knowledge about the game. And instead of going through another world and progressing like the first time, you can also join the body recovery squad and instead try to help out people recovering their lost gear. People will usually contact the body recovery squad when they lost their inventory at difficult or hard spots and they are having a hard time recovering their inventories themselves. So this is actually also a fun challenge for you to make sure that the person that asked for help will in fact get their stuff back. If you're interested in this, you can sign up on their Discord or via their Twitter and they have open applications quite often. And this is another way to give you a really unique experience in the game. Change number five, being more ambitious with building projects than the first time. How did your bases look the first time around? Well, I can predict that you probably didn't do everything that's possible with building in this game. So for a second playthrough, you can make all kinds of huge ass bases with a lot more detail or build things you didn't build before, think of new designs, etc, etc. Volume's building possibilities are pretty much endless and you can do a lot that you probably won't cover in a single playthrough of the game. To add on to that, you can also do things that are less obvious, like making secret rooms or using weird structures as your room roof as the game does in fact count more things than you might think as a roof and i've covered a lot of these neat tricks and more in previous videos so check those out they will all be in the description for those that are interested in something like that but you could also obviously just experiment and play around yourself that way you'll keep innovating and making cool architecture buildings bases you name it so we're halfway through this video and i want to take this moment to thank surfshark vpn for sponsoring this video there are a lot of websites out there that take your info without you even knowing it but you can swim under their radar using a virtual private network out all of the vpns out there i use surfshark myself because they provide a great and fast surface and surfshark makes sure to stop websites from tracking your info and accordingly doing unwanted stuff with that info like data mining and intrusive advertising actually one of my favorite features of surfshark is that you can use it to watch content and you can get access to videos articles sites etc etc that aren't normally available to you due to your location so if you want both protection and freedom online click the link in the description and use my code nizar for a whopping 83 percent off the regular price yes you heard it right 83 percent next to that you also get three months of service totally for free when you use my link change number six the nomad life a lot of players will settle down in the meadow, somewhere near their starting location, make a base and that's it. However, a completely different way to approach the game is playing like a nomad. Basically you don't have a home base, but every time you travel overseas or enter a new biome, you'll settle there until your next voyage. This is a fundamentally different approach to the game as you don't have to continuously go back to your base or to some base at your starter island which probably most of you are used to by now, but instead you'll always have your base with you and can upgrade your stuff locally. There are also quite a number of actually useful villages scattered around the map and you can make use of these as well as a true nomad. Change number 7, getting all the trophies. So pretty much every monster in the game has a unique trophy and collecting all of these is quite fun and gives a very cool look to your base if you also decide to display them. Let everyone know that you are the true monster hunter with all damn trophies, let's go. You can even still do this in your current playthrough, but if you want to actively work on this while progressing through the game, you can do it in your second playthrough and keep it in mind every time you see a new monster. That way you'll keep killing these monsters near their spawn location until they drop a nice trophy for you. <laughs> 
Change number 8. Entering PvP tournaments or playing on a PvP surfer. Not a lot of people seem to be in Valheim PvP yet for here. some reason, but it's certainly a really unique aspect of the game that you should try. It mainly involves strategy and maybe a bit of mechanical skill if you decide to use the bow, but fighting against other players can definitely be fun and will require good tactics and strategy from your side. Especially when it's like a tournament style type of thing where the winner gets a reward or something cool. And these tournaments get hosted here and there, but if you want something that lasts a little bit longer, then you can also join a PvP server and get your second playthrough going there. It adds a completely new dimension to the game and you will have to deal with a new threat in the game from now on. A quick reminder for those that still have not subscribed. Have you still not subscribed? Well, do it now. It's completely free. It's one button click. Let's go. Change number 9, playing optimal, or if you want to go to the next level, speedrunning. Do you remember all your mistakes from the first time around? Just because of that, and like with any game, your second playthrough will probably be a lot smoother if you cut out all the mistakes and all the inefficiencies and use everything you learned the first time around for good use. This might ultimately lead to a more pleasant gaming experience. You can take it even one step further and speedrun the game. Now speedrunning is actually another game mode like hardcore mode that has been around for a long time in the gaming world and with speedrunning you basically want to kill all the bosses as quickly as possible which again will provide you a completely different experience as now you will have to use all kinds of strategies to progress through the game as fast and as optimal as possible. People are already doing it and believe it or not even finishing the entire game within 90 minutes. Change number 10, the completionist trophy. You can do this on a new playthrough of the game, but this one might actually fit the people that rather stay in their current world and do not want to start all over even better. Basically, the completionist trophy entails that you complete the game in every way possible, think about no more fog on your map, explore everything there is so the map fully unlocks for you, or on a similar note, reveal all the boss locations on the map and mark every point of interest there is out there. If you want to go even further, you can also gather a huge amount of resources, food, materials, etc, etc. Doing all these things might seem pointless or tedious to some of you, but they can in fact be really useful if you think about the long term because you will be well prepared for upcoming updates and expansions. So guys, those were 10 main changes you can make for a new playthrough of the game. I hope you enjoyed my ideas and this video. Let me know in the comments what your thoughts are and what you personally did after you killed all the bosses or what you did in a new world or in a new playthrough. I'm really curious actually. And like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video. And if you're really cool then put on the bell notifications as well. But wait, this video is not over yet. Let's say you're burnt out and none of these ideas appeal to you. Well then my final tip would be to take a break until the next update. Fallheim will have a lot of cool updates this year and I'll be updating all of you right here on my channel. So definitely subscribe to never miss anything important. And yeah guys, now I'm seriously done. I'll see you in the next one. Bye!